Record button's not working. It is recording now, but I'm going to... But there's have... no intro. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio Show with me, Dan Wendell. Today, we're going to be talking about whether or not it makes sense that people that live in more expensive areas when it comes to housing are able to retire sooner, or do they have to delay retirement because they live in a more expensive area? And we're going to talk about a recent study that came out, Boston College again, Center for Retirement Research, December of 2022. You can look this up. I'll put the link right here for those that are watching. How does local cost of living affect retirement? So how does your housing cost impact when or how you retire? And let's bring in my co-host, Tony Shore. There he is. Tony, we're going to talk about housing costs. Wow. Relative to retirement. Okay. And... I have the study up here, which I know you love. You you love the Center for Retirement Research. Didn't we, um, we kind of attacked? We didn't attack the woman that runs that show. Uh, we, we we had oh, a, yeah. We, we have she wanted to do away with Is the that Roth. the word of I put that show up there. She wanted to do away with the Roth IRA. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just had a conversation with uh, a tax expert, Dan, um, earlier this week, Nick Stovall. I don't know if you've heard of that guy. Yeah, but, for sure. But uh, yeah, he wrote a book and uh, I happened to do his audio book. So I know him and he was talking about, he was asked whether I did an interview with him and he was asked whether the Roth would ever go away. And he explained how, no, the Roth, we need the Roth and people rely on it. And uh, it's a political nightmare if they tried to do away with that completely or even make significant changes. He doesn't see that happening. That's his opinion. Um, but that made me think when I was talking to him, I wanted to mention that Boston College uh, woman. I didn't bring it because I didn't remember the exact name and information but, uh, that article <laughs> said you should do away with it, which I still laugh about. Well, this one, exactly. This one's different researcher in that group, though, but it's it just does a focus narrow on are people that live in cities or more expensive areas retiring later or sooner? What do ah. you think? Do you think, do you think that um, it impacts it at all? Maybe it doesn't have any impact. So the cost of living where you live, does that affect when you retire? That's right. Um, I'm going to say no, because the cost of, if they live in a big city, they probably have a job that pays more. And so more is coming out and going into retirement funds. So they're able to retire at the same time or earlier than people living in lower cost areas because of That's, an income. This is the theory. That's good. And I wrote that here. I, there's a spelling error that was usual. Does more expensive housing lead to higher wages? which then leads to more savings, like you're suggesting, and then leads to an early retirement because you have more in savings. That's the theory, right? Right. So I mean, that's one possibility. I'm not saying that's uh, the end all be all because right. I know people who don't have a lot of money who live in big cities, but I also know that the majority of people that can afford to live in expensive areas have typically have way more in retirement funds as well, but their cost of living is higher. So I don't know. I think it evens out to be the same in the end. I would oh, so say. Oh, now you're hedging. No, you're hedging. I'm hedging a little bit. Just to... <laughs> you're waiting for my buzzer to come. Well, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's explore this. So, <laughs> if you and you could read this, I'm going to put the link right up here again in case anyone wants. It's called "How Does Local Cost of Living Affect Retirement?" Center for Retirement Research. So this is new. Um, they take the data from the previous surveys that they do. They kind of mm -hmm. reuse that data and do different analyses. So this. The first thing they talk about is, well, let's look at the let's look at the housing costs and they break it into three categories, low, median and high. And they say, all right, if you live in the lowest housing cost versus the highest housing cost area, how much should your 
earnings go up to offset the actual costs of housing. Because I think housing costs is about 40% of people's income. So they looked at what's a mortgage cost in the low area versus the high area. And what should your salary go up by median? And they said 32% is what they calculated should go up by. But the reality is, Tony, salary doesn't go up by that much. It goes up by 20%. Ah. On average, on average. Obviously, this is going to be skewed in different areas, the bell curve. So, okay, so you're not making as much. So this idea of, well, you make more because you live in a more expensive area, it's true, but is it true enough? Right. That's the big question. Right. Right. Now, That's why I hedged right, right there. Right. Exactly. So you don't know. Um, yeah. Now, Social Security is based on wages and Social Security is a big part of people's retirement income. We've done shows on how much it replaces. Right. And, you know, the more you make, the more goes into Social Security, yet the less your benefits are, relatively but speaking. Right. When you retire, you get your benefits aren't as great then. Relatively speaking. So Relatively, if you yeah. if you make the minimum Social Security amount and you put in a hundred thousand over your lifetime, you'll get a majority of that back over your lifetime versus someone that makes 10 million, they they won't see how much they put in as much. So they're gonna get a less of a percentage back because it's a progressive program. Yep. So the higher earners get less back in Social Security, relatively speaking. A smaller percentage of what they put in. Mm -hmm. And so they call this, which was a new term for me that I read in this. And I was like, oh, what a good idea. Uh, makes sense. Re replacement rate penalty. I've never heard that terminology. Replacement rate penalty is what they the term they use. And I, I couldn't figure it out. I will say in this study, they use the term retirement to mean take Social Security, which we I discussed in the past. Just yeah. because you retired doesn't mean you're taking Social Security. But, right. Um, so there's a replacement rate penalty, meaning it costs you more to replace your income the more you make because Social Security is not going to replace that same percentage. So I think the average replacement rate uh, for Social Security is 53% for the lower earners. And, um, and it's probably closer to 40 or less for the higher earners. So lower earners can replace more of their income in retirement using Social Security alone. Ah, so this I makes see. sense, right? This yeah, you're looking at the percentages, doing the math, you know, and then yeah. so the numbers are saying it's not true. People in big cities or in more expensive areas, I should say, to live can't necessarily retire any earlier. Because they are not getting as much from Social Security. However... Well, let's talk about that. So there's three ways that they could deal with this replacement rate penalty. And the replacement rate penalty is just the way Social Security is designed. Yeah. It's a progressive program. It's the way the formula is set up. It's And they can't control that. Right. So what do you do? What do you just bury your head in the sand? No, you either save more, delay taking Social Security, or move to a lower cost area in retirement. Okay. Panama. Panama. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Guatemala, I thought you were going to do, right? Um, <laughs> Antigua, okay. Guatemala. It's a great place. We did a show on moving to Mexico, right? Yeah. Didn't we talk about that? I'll put that up yep. here for those that are interested. Lower cost Retiring living. in Mexico. What's yeah. the pros and cons? Um, I think I think you could live off of 1500 was the was the Yeah, uh, crazy. 1500 a month. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Okay, <laughs> so let's so let's talk about the first idea, saving more. So here's the stat that they came up with when they then they analyze the data. Doubling the median house prices, so from the lowest to the highest, is about double the cost, the living cost. Um, that has an impact of about 190% more lifetime average annual savings. Wow. So the people that are living in the higher cost area have almost double, no, yeah, double the amount Right. of retirement savings 200 almost 200 percent more than the other people yeah that's what i said at the beginning of the show i figured that would be the case but um do they save 200 percent more i mean that that's the theoretically thing. could but housing costs would allow them to save more but hey that's the theory 
Yeah. And then, so then the next logical step of that is to say, okay, you're getting less percentage of your social security to replacement. So you're replacing less, take that savings. And in the study here, uh, they said they used 2021 numbers. If you buy a immediate annuity with that difference to just say, here's the lump sum of my savings, give me income. When you add that to social security, it is roughly equal to the lower income earner replacement rate. So when you add social security and your savings in a form of a, a, a lifetime income, it equals the same as someone that just has social security at the lower income rate. Mm. I found that interesting. That is interesting. So it's like, it doesn't matter if you make a lot or a little when you, the savings that you, the extra money you make and you throw it into income later comes out to be the same as if you made the lower amount your whole life. And how is that going to work with your higher cost of living? Cause you're used to a higher cost of living. So you're going to need more if you right. live in a so high cost So technically area. you're just, you have a higher cost of living, but the replacement percentage is going to be the same as if you didn't make a lot and had a lower cost of living. So, yeah. um, but interestingly enough, savings is a lot higher for those people sure. in the higher cost of living areas. And that makes a difference. Huge difference. Now let's talk about social security. According to the data, there is no significant increase in the claiming age, meaning those in the higher cost of living areas are not delaying social security claiming compared to those in the lower cost. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Most of the people I know who are already retired are like, yeah, I took it at 62. You're right. A yeah. majority of people take it early. I think a overwhelming yeah. majority of people. My neighbor didn't early. retire until 70, I want to say, until he hit 70 or 71, but he took social security as soon as he could but that he still worked full time and made a lot of money. So he, he got penalized. He didn't, they took that back. It's like, yeah. And I told him before he filed for social security that that would happen. And then he grudgingly admitted he did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said, Hey, go here and listen to the podcast on social security that Dan does because yeah, he's listening he's to some of all. our shows. He just, it's a, it's one thing to hear what you're saying, Dan, and it's another thing to actually listen and apply it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. So the, the theory is that the more you make, you have more from savings, you can live off of that to delay social security. And that's usually the strategy. Right. But people don't seem to do that. They still seem to delay so uh, take social security early. Now they did say those with a higher education level tend to take social security later. Yeah, that's what's so. weird about this guy is super smart, right? Like he's very well educated. He had a very high position, but he uh yeah, I don't I think he just thought his health he might as well yeah. take it now because of his health. But I tried to explain uh, that, hey, it's going to affect your wife and what she gets. And but she, he's mm -hmm. got pensions from the government and other things. So I don't think he was too, he didn't really care. <laughs> like right. he thought he wanted to get the government's money but as much as he could, well, he could because right. he thought, oh, I'm, I got Burn this the health hand issue. Is better than two in the bush for sure. But now he's going strong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you just never know. Maybe That's it true. will be the right decision. But I think in general, what you're seeing in from this survey is that most people take it early, regardless yeah. of their economic situation. Right. Um, but the theory is, if you delay Social Security, you can catch up to the lower income earner percentage replacement rate. You just need to use your other savings to do it. And people don't right. like to do that. No, people don't like no. to spend their IRA early, which is what I often recommend. Right. It's counterintuitive, but right. the math works out. And then last but not least is moving, retiring into a lower cost area. So here's yeah. the, the, the age old thing. Okay. Panama. I live in New Jersey and I have a big house and a fancy job in Manhattan and I make a lot of money. I live in Connecticut, whatever. Um, I'm going to move from Minneapolis to Podunk, Florida. Um, and therefore, my cost of living is going to go down. I'm going to Gators. downsize. 
deal with alligators, <laughs> right? There's different there's, there's pros and cons. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the stat. Now, Tony, you mentioned you know some people that live in high cost of living areas. Yep. And they are going to retire there potentially. The stats suggest that homeowners are more likely to move than renters. 10% versus 4%. I don't, I don't believe know why that. I put $4. 10% versus <laughs> 4%. Um, the money's always on my mind, right? Yeah. So the question is, why? And I think the answer is because they have equity in their home, whereas the renters have no equity. Have no equity. So they don't they have that to savings. move somewhere else. Yeah. Or they might have savings, but not in their equity. And it's for some reason, maybe it's psychological, people are more than more likely to use the equity in their home to downsize and then have that money to retire with than they are to then take their savings and then use that to retire. Because they didn't see it. It's in their home. They don't really. Whereas if you have 150000 in the bank, you're like, oh, I got 150000 I can go buy a car. I can do whatever I want. Whereas if you have 150000 in equity, you don't really see it until you have to address it. Right, right. So I guess what we're seeing here from this is that, yes, living in a higher cost area, you'll earn more, most likely, because otherwise you probably couldn't afford to live there and you'd be forced to move. But that doesn't mean you're going to retire sooner unless you take the savings, the difference between your income versus the people in the lower areas, lower income um, housing cost areas. If you don't take that savings and put it aside for retirement, then you're probably going to retire just like everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you were right, Tony. But you were wrong initially. You had... <laughs> And then I, I had actually you might have been spot on because you kind of hedged, but that's what this is hedging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah. And a lot of people, I think I know a lot of people who are in high paid jobs, they, they, be, they're more addicted to their jobs and they're, I think they're more likely to work longer anyway and not retire early. Um, I just yeah. rarely, I don't know anyone who like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm 56 and I'm, you know, I actually qualify for early retirement. I've got enough money. I'm going to retire or I'm 60, even 62. I don't know anyone who's retired before. I personally, the people I see retiring right now, uh, they're all 65 and up and usually 70. Um, it, I, and I know it varies. People out there have said, no, I retired at 58 because I got a pension or, you know, that happens, but I just don't know those people. My brother-in-law keeps saying he's got, he works for the government. And he says he's going to retire and then work for them as on a contract basis. He'll get his full pension plus get paid more as a contractor than he's making now. It's like, holy cow, that's what a great situation to be in. But he can take full retirement at 57 and get his full pension and or that, something crazy. Yeah, uh, but it. he but he's not doing it. Like I he's hit that age. He said he was going to do it, but he hasn't done it. So we'll see. <laughs> we well, will see. So. I do meet people that are retired in their fifties. Um, either they're disabled or they have medical issues. Yeah, that's but true. more than likely it's a retiree with a, a pension from up north. So they've done. They they have Social Security. They had good earnings. They have their pension, yeah. so they don't have to worry about the income the or using their key. lump sum extra savings. They were forced into using their extra savings to buy an annuity, the pension, pension, right? Yeah. And so they have social security, their pension annuity, and they, they can get that usually after 20 years as a New York city cop or a sanitation worker or, you know, firefighter, something like that. Teacher, Railroad. Right. And, and so they have that pension and they were able to retire and maybe they could delay Social Security not. And that's probably what they do because they're in their 50s. So they might say, well, one of us is going to turn at 62. The other will wait till 70. So, But the key is they do not only save more through their pension, they don't need Social Security right away, and they move to a lower cost of living area. Wow. 
So they earned, saved, moved. That's the way to do it if you want to retire early. But like you said, which I don't want to diminish because it's absolutely true. Those that earn more kind of get addicted to that lifestyle. They get addicted to that income. They never enough. They want more, more, more. And they feel like, you know, retiring is throwing in the towel on and they claim it's, I don't know what I'm going to do that. It's really, sometimes they just don't want to give up that income. Right. Yeah. True. So there it is, Tony. So the, the researchers say, hey, delay um, delay Social Security. People don't do it. Researchers say, move to a lower cost area. A lot of people don't do it. So 